Hey there, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, my name is Natasha and today I'm going to share with you some history about robust tea but also the benefits of this tea because while it's gaining some popularity and rightfully so, it's a great alternative to coffee or other teas that are filled with caffeine and not only that, it's got heaps of health benefits which can just double up as a tasty tea but also a healthy tea why wouldn't you want both? And so this is really a tea to know about and get your hands on, a good quality kind if you're able. And so stay tuned and let's talk all about robust tea. Now robust tea is native to South Africa, which is actually where our family is from. So I grew up drinking robust tea at home. And pretty much my whole life I've had robust tea wherever I went. It's a pretty staple tea for South Africans. We drink this tea nearly every day and so not only is it a bit of a taste of home, but I know that this is a really special tea because if you're interested in herbal teas, you'll know that they're pretty grassy tasting if you're, you know, exploring things like dandelion or nettle tea. By themselves, they don't taste all that great, but if you compare it with something like a rooibos tea, we've kind of added the black tea that you would normally add, which would make a delicious tea, except you're adding rooibos tea, which is free from caffeine and adds a delicious flavor and color to your tea and sort of eliminates that earthy, grassy flavor. So you can still have the health benefits of herbal teas, but kind of in a mellow, still good tasting way. Now, Robust Tea grows in this very specific area in the southern tip of South Africa. The area is called Cedarburg, and it grows here specifically because there's something in the soil and the microorganisms in this area that just helps this plant to grow. Now they've tried to commercialize the growing of rooibos and it's been somewhat successful but not very successful. First of all, the seeds are very hard to find. The way that this plant reproduces and creates more seeds is not in your typical way. From what I can gauge, basically there needs to be a forest fire and some other kind of change in the environment for these seeds to reproduce but also it's difficult for these seeds to germinate. The plant is considered a legume, and so that harder outer shell doesn't just, you know, break open all that easily. This can also happen through wildfires, but also through animals or other kind of environmental uh, changes in the area that allow that seed pod to break open and create more robust bushes, which is also called red bush, if you're gonna call it um, the English version of rooibos. And so this plant doesn't just grow that easily, it is very specific to this area because of the microorganisms and the soil type, and it requires its environment to actually reproduce, like I was saying, and so it stays native to this area, and there are some people who have figured out how to commercialize it in the area, and there are rubbish farms, but they're not all that popular. And so while that's getting sorted out, the history of rubbish tea isn't all that specific. It's quite vague and it's actually quite recent. There isn't very much about it in like, old, old ages. <laughs> so it's only really gained popularity very recently and you're starting to see a whole load of blends including robust tea because it is just so good tasting but also good for you. Now let's talk about all the ways that it is good for you. Well it is jam-packed in antioxidants which is a fancy term for healthy <laughs> but there's actually very specific antioxidants in this tea that can give you all kinds of health benefits. And the three most important, polyphenol, asphalathin, and quercetin. Now polyphenol is very good at boosting your immune system. It also reduces any kind of infection that you have in your body, and it can fight free radicals that just shouldn't be in your body. So that's a wonderful antioxidant to have. And the asphalathin is specifically good for reducing your glucose levels. So if you've got any kind of danger of diabetes or just high blood sugar, this is a great tea to sort of reduce that because it contains the antioxidant that will do that for you. And then finally, the gricetin brings down your blood pressure and it also keeps your heartbeat beating regularly. So that's a whole bunch of health benefits jam-packed in this tea and it tastes good. I mean, of course, you should be having a cup of robust tea every day. I mean, who wouldn't want these health benefits? Um, it's just contributing so much to the nourishment of your body. So it's very healthy for you and it tastes delicious. Now another great component of robust tea is its high flavonoid count, which there's many different kinds of flavonoids and I don't know specifically all the ones that are in robust tea, but flavonoids can be very good for fighting cancer and for helping your brain. It also aids with tension, any kind of allergies. 
indigestion, things like that. So, I mean, you're really just drinking medicine by drinking Robo's tea. It, it's just taking care and nourishing your body. So a very healthy tea to have indeed. Now the things that we make with Robo's tea in the house is just straightforward Robo's tea, which I'll use a teaspoon of Robo's tea and steep it in about a cup of, or a mug I should say, a mug of hot boiling water. And then once it's steeped nicely, I'll add some milk if you'd like to have your black teas with milk. This will be the perfect way for you to have this tea. But you can also combine this, like I was saying, with your herbal tea. So if you're starting to drink nettle tea because you read about all the benefits of nettle leaf tea or dandelion tea or lemon balm or whatever it may be, this is a great tea to combine with those kind of leafy herbs because it can make those benefits from those plants just taste good in a delicious tasting tea. Now if I'm going to make a mix like that, generally I won't add milk. Um, but I'll just drink those herbal teas straight. And I'll link some recipes down below if you're interested in some of the herbal mixes that I've already made with Roybos tea in the house. As I'm experimenting with some loose leaf teas, but also drying some of the herbs in our garden and starting to make tea with it. Now another way that you can use Roybos tea is Roybos chai tea lattes. Now chai tea is a very popular thing, of course the whole spices make it delicious flavorful, spicy drink, especially around the cooler seasons. And so if you're interested in that, instead of making it with black tea, you can make it with rooibos tea, which we do often. And I love to have milk. And so this chai tea latte coupled with healthy robust tea and all the health benefits that you're getting from those spices, I mean, that is just a flavor bomb, health medicine cup that you're consuming, which is just, I think, a wonderful drink to have in the cooler weather. So robust chai tea latte, I've also made this before. I can link you down a recipe if you're interested in that and the directions for how to make that on your stove. Now, Robo's Tea also makes great gifts. So if you can find yourself a really good supplier, you can make little tea bags as gifts for other people. Like I was saying, you can make those herbal tea recipes and maybe gift a whole jar of, of Robo's Tea blend to someone. But you can also make them a jar of Robo's Chai Tea Latte. Just put all of the whole spices and a little bit of Robo's Tea in a jar for them, or a tea bag, whatever's easiest. And you can gift that as a gift to someone. So Robo's Tea also makes a really good gift because not everybody has access to Robo's Tea or even thinks to go buy it or knows about it. So you can share this knowledge with them as well so that they can get to know Robo's Tea. Well, that's just a little bit about the history of Robo's Tea, some of their benefits and how we use it in our house and also in gifts if you're interested in that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and hearing me chat about Robo's Tea. And if you're interested in any kind of other herbal teas or I don't know, maybe you're just interested in hanging out with me in the kitchen or out in the garden. Uh, please stick around and subscribe and catch some of the upcoming content. Alright, see ya, bye.